don't need to do the product rule here because two is just a constant. If you have a constant in front with no x, you can just take the derivative and bring the two with it. Um, if you want to do the two product rule, you can, but the derivative of two is a zero, and so that's why you don't have to. So when I'm doing the derivative, I'm going to use the product rule, and the derivative of two x is just two, leave e to the x alone, plus leave two x alone, and take the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x, and then over here, I don't have to do the product rule, and so the derivative of negative 2e to the x is just negative 2e to the x, which sometimes feels like that shouldn't be, but it is. Eventually, we're going to talk about, like, finding where the derivative equals 0 and, and worrying about stuff like that. And uh, I've seen questions like this on an AP test before where they want you to factor out of e to the x. You actually factor out of 2e to the x. But on this problem, you don't have to go any further than this, right? Like, nothing's going to cancel out. If you want to factor something out, you can. Oh, wait. Oh, look, look, 2e to the x minus, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Let's look at that. Let's get it. This is this, right? Way better. That's very exciting. Yes? Did you hear that? Product rule. Don't overlook the product rule. for you is on the test, I give you directions like this. You go to the differentiation. So I don't make you just guess when you go to the differentiation. Um, but you should be able to know we don't have a rule for this. I can't use the chain rule or the power rule because there's an x up here, not a number. Um, I can't use a to the x because this is not a number, it's a function. And so when you have a function to a function, that's when you should do logarithmic differentiation. So I would say ln of y equals ln of cosine x dx, which means that I could pull this out front, right? x ln cosine of x. To do the derivative of this now, we need to do the product rule. Right? You can't break this up as addition. You can only break up multiplication inside an ln. So you have to kind of keep those properties straight when you do this. But if I do the derivative of this, I'll have 1 over y times dy dx. And the product rule, the derivative of x is just 1 times the second function, which is ln of cosine of x, plus leave the x alone. And the derivative of ln of u is u prime over u. And u is cosine of x, so the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x over u, which is cosine of x. Do you agree with that? Sine over cosine is tangent. There's a negative there, so I'm going to say that's minus x tangent of x. I'm just going to leave my answer like that. Oh, this is so good. I think my brain for two minutes is just asleep. What? What's wrong? Um, multiply by y, I'm just going to go ahead and replace what y was, which was cosine of x to the x.
again? Okay. All right, 5 or 6 is the whole derivative of an inverse. I'm going to do 6 because 5 is just five is just a linear function. So the fact that they give you negative 2 really means nothing because it's linear and the slope is always 4. But the, the thing is they're asking you to find the derivative of the inverse function at x equals f of a, meaning they just want you to know that the derivative of the inverse is the reciprocal. If I'm 6, you should be able to go back to the side very quickly. The idea is that you don't have to actually find the inverse. You could on these because these are possible to find the inverse. But on the AP test, they tend to either not give you a function at all or give you a function that's like almost impossible to find the inverse of. But when they say find, I really, and I really struggle with this uh, notation, which is way better than the F inverse net prime of X. They're asking you to find the derivative of the inverse. So step one is find the derivative of the function at the value they give you. And so I can say F prime of X is 4X. So I can say f prime of 3 is 4 times 3, which is 12. They want you to find the derivative of the inverse at the appropriate point on the, um, on the inverse function. You're not finding the inverse derivative at 3. You're actually, if you wanted to write the notation of it, remember what inverse means. Inverse means if x is 3 on here, right, if I plug f of 3 in here, I would get 3 squared, which is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. Right? If f of 3 equals 18, I know the inverse function when x is 18, the y value is 18. Do you agree with that statement? Inverse function means the x and the y switch places. You don't really have to do that on this problem. But I just want you to be aware that we're not actually finding the inverse at 3. We're going to be finding the inverse derivative at 18, which is just the reciprocal of this. And you don't have to do this middle part. I'm, I'm explaining it to you. Really me and I was like, oh, yeah, because if you can't tell me they're on, it's just 112. I, I got that, but then I was figuring out because I was just 18 studying. or something. Sometimes they give you multiple choice questions. Like, like if it was, pretend they don't give you an equation, they say stuff like this f of 3 equals 18. And f prime of 3 um, equals 12. And f inverse of um, 3 equals, oh, no, let me try to something up, um, 7. And f inverse of 18 equals something. And they ask you to find the derivative, and they kind of give you way too much information. Because they want you to pick out, oh, you got to switch the points around. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. Why I just throw that in there? You don't have to do that on this problem. You could just easily find the derivative, do the reciprocal. I was just trying to give you extra information. F inverse. Oh. I was just making that seven up. That's really not true, but we'll look at those other questions later. So. Just remember, the derivative, the inverse function's derivative is the reciprocal of the regular derivative at the appropriate point, which is the point I was looking at. Okay? Alright, give me these. I really will try to grade these by the end of the day if you want to come back and uh, have a list to look at. If you don't want to, I don't care if that's you. But I was on Deborah this morning, and yesterday when I left school, I kind of went like this in my tray. And I was like, oh, EK lab, test questions. I could just not take anything home to grade and just grade stuff this weekend. And then this morning, as I was getting ready, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even grade any homework this week. And calculus. So I didn't even grade your homework this weekend. But I'll grade those as well. Wait a minute. While you're doing other stuff. Let's talk about the review really quickly, and then I'll let you retake that quiz if you want to. There's not really a lot to write down. We really only did four sections. And since we've learned the table, we've been doing it over and over again. So hopefully it's not something you've forgotten. The one thing maybe you have forgotten 
is we did talk about taking a derivative of parametric equations, and that's where they give you like x equals cosine of t, y equals sine of t. Right? They give you two functions, and they ask you to find the derivative, and you have to take the derivative of the y function over the derivative of the x function. So when they say find dy over dx, you have to remember that you take dy over dt over dx over dt. Not hard to do, but it's just that's something that we haven't talked about in a while. Implicit, that's when you can't solve for y, right? When the x and the y's are all mixed up. If the directions say use implicit, definitely use implicit. Um, don't forget to solve that for dy dx. Because that's where there's a lot of algebra involved, where you have to get your dy dx's on one side, factor it out, move it back over. Sometimes I just want the derivative. Sometimes I actually give you the point that you plug in. We also did the second derivative on that. Remember how that was kind of ugly and you had to do the quotient rule and you plug in your dy dx. The inverse trig derivatives, you just need to know those. Um, hopefully you do know them or you'll show me that you know them in just a minute when you do the, the, the quiz. Uh, we can write them out if you want. I'm kind of scared to because I've done this for lunch today. Like, I'm like not going to uh, mess them up. U pi over the square root of 1 minus u squared. This is just a negative of this, right? Yeah. Negative u pi over the square root of 1 minus u squared. And tangent is u pi over 1 plus u squared. Tangent's my favorite. If you're allowed to have a favorite. Um, I'll let's go ahead and decode these here. Um, u prime, negative u prime over 1 plus u squared. And secant is my least favorite. Is u prime over the absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus 1. Um, <laughs> it depends on what's happening in the problem. If there's something on the top that can cancel out with something in the absolute value, you are allowed to simplify that. But if there's something left in the bottom, you have to think about, do I need absolute value bars around it? And if you've noticed some of the ones in the back of the book, if there's like a squared term down here, like if it was x squared, they're not going to put absolute value bars around it because you don't need to put absolute value bars around a squared term because it's always going to be positive. So just kind of think about it, and uh, especially multiple choice questions, just kind of look at their answers and see which one makes sense. Right? Hopefully those are, you know, you just know them, like 2 plus 2 now. Okay. Oh, did it right. I would have got that wrong on my quiz. Oh, I agree. Implicit. That's where we solve, like, where you do the dy dx every time you take the derivative of y, which we also do when we do logarithmic differentiation. So the good thing about some of this stuff is it's been reviewing itself over and over again instead of having, like, four separate sections. And then the last thing we did this week were those log and exponential derivatives. We have not had a quiz over that, but you are expected to know those derivatives uh, as well. And so, again, I'm just going to write those out for you because I just think you should know them. So... My favorite one is e to the x, and so I, I'm not writing the d over dx. I guess I should, but I'm just gonna I'm just writing these. So like e to the u is e to the u times u prime. A to the u is a to the u times ln of a times u prime. Ln of u is u prime over u. And log a of u is u prime over ln of a times u. One one I'm just confident about every time I do it. I don't know why. <laughs> Those are the derivatives you need to know. Logarithmic differentiation, definitely a question. 
probably not a big giant question like where you have to separate a million things. Probably just more like a, something, an X to an X, so that I can see that you know how to do it and solve, multiply the Y over, don't forget that, like I did. Um, but a lot of derivative stuff, and so you just have to make sure you don't start making up your own rules, you don't add on the chain rule, you don't uh, forget the product rule, right? So just be careful as you're doing those. Um, some are easy, some are just a straight definition, some you got to do the U value, the chain rule stuff. Uh, but that's it, like I'm not going to waste more time here. This is the review that I wrote up here yesterday. If you didn't write it down, you need to write it down today. This is due on Monday, your test is Monday. So that means um, I'll try to be here actually at a decent time on Monday, like by 7.40, ready to answer questions. Um, this book has even A and odd answers in the back of the review, which means you should be able to check all of them. I believe I've given you my phone number before, but if you, if you need it again, I can give it to you. And text me. Don't call me. I don't really want to talk to you. But text me questions if you have a question that you really really feel like you're stuck and you are stressed text me i have a book at home i can look at it and i'm i'm pretty good at texting uh cal calculus speak stuff um uh, so you're welcome to text me this weekend um if you have questions sunday night like after midnight don't text me uh because I will not be responding to answer your guys' question after midnight on Sunday night, or any night after midnight. Um, but if you have something and you feel like you're, you're at a point that you're really stuck on, on redoing or solving a problem, uh, feel free to send me your questions and I can help you with them. <laughs> so, my husband has to go into work uh, Saturday night for time change because he works in the hospital and so they have to make sure like all the equipment changes over correctly and it's, you think it would just automatically do it but there's certain things that don't and they have to make sure everything loads up so he has to go in Saturday night and work from like time changes at like 2 in the morning so he goes in at like midnight and comes home at like 5 so Sunday morning when the children get up I take them away so that he can actually see them <laughs> so we'll be, we're up early so feel free to text me early in the morning if you're up but uh, late nights we're not really up Saturday Super great, I'm going to post this video for the kids at FFA and, and you know, so everyone on YouTube that could find my video can have my phone number.